welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick, and I have to learn to wait I know, for the Garthwaite. For the wait, for the, <laughs> I, I, the Simmons, that's just muscle. Right. You know, like it just happens. Yep. It's not, you know, I don't know, whatever. Um, so I am back. Hi, did you have a good trip to Vegas? I mean, it's, it's Vegas. It's, uh, yeah, it was like 108 degrees yeah. one of the days or 111. I don't know. I didn't leave the hotel for a, uh, for most of it. One of my friends has her Fitbits or her walking steps and she measured that she had walked 16 miles oh, on yeah. the first day setting up. Uh, the hotel, you know, you like walk two miles to the convention center and, um, but the conference itself was great. I talked a little bit about startup nations and sort of the notion of um, how you can create different jurisdictions that uh, actually respect property rights and respect community, mm -hmm. which would be yeah, the opposite. What we feel like is happening right now. Of the situation that is currently happening on the west side of Manchester, yeah, which... You know, for folks back home who have not been following, uh, there's this proposed community center, the Mark Stebbins Community Center, that is going to be put in on a four point something acre green space park owned by Parks and Rec mm -hmm. that is currently in use for a community mm -hmm. center that uh, none of the abutters were informed of until about 10 days ago and that they're voting on tonight right. at City Hall. So for those who don't know the process, because, you know, the process is murky and nobody really knows. People don't, the average person in the city, when you talk to them, because we talk to a lot of people, doesn't know, like, how things work, you know. So... Apparently, we were schooled at this meeting about, you know, how you make, um, oh, what was the word? It was awful. It made me, it bugged me. Anyways, you when you see a parcel of city-owned land that you want, you go to, you know, the city and you make these overtures that you would be interested in it. Okay, fine. Whatever that backdoor stuff is, whatever. And then the, somebody in the city sent, refers it to lands and buildings to see if, you know, that's appropriate. So the meeting back in June of Lands and Buildings, which is the subcommittee of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Which is when I found out about Exactly. This. We didn't find out about this until after that meeting. So, she, you know, the neighbors attached to this property, the abutters, found out about this project for the most part after the vote was taken. The vote of the of the Land and Buildings Committee was taken. And they that the Land and, Bil Bil Land and Buildings could have... Um, kept it, tabled it, done some research, and then come back with a, a thing. They also could have just voted to um, deem the property surplus, which was the first step in this process. But instead, they voted literally to re recommend to the full board of mayor and aldermen tonight, July 19th, to sell the property to this entity. So we're not talking about lands and buildings and saying, yeah, you know, maybe there's something there and we should look at it, blah, blah, blah. There are down and out... Um, without, in my opinion, much due diligence at all, just recommending to the full board of Mayor and Alderman that they sell the parcel of land that currently houses um, the West Side Community Gardens and to the Mark Stevens Community Center for $600,000. Now, Carla and I and a whole bunch, about 100 other people, were at the meeting, um, I think it was July 11th, so a week or so ago. Um, Last which, Monday. Which was... A full month after sure. they went to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, the subcommittee, and only a few days after the abutters were finally notified. And actually, I misspoke. I didn't find ab out about it in uh, at that meeting. I found out about it when there was an article in the right. union leader reporting right. on, on this meeting. backroom yeah. deal that just magically um, happened. So... Uh, that everyone voted for except Joe Kelly Levasseur. Right, on the subcommittee. On the subcommittee. So now tonight, July 19th, Tuesday, which is when Carla and I tape, uh, the full board of mayor and aldermen will meet. Now, going back, I, we did talk about this a little bit. Were you here last week? I was. You were? Okay. On I'm like Wednesday. confused. <laughs> so we did talk about this some, um, but I went this morning because I didn't have a chance to tell you this. So yesterday, I got a very nice phone call from a gentleman who watches our TV show. Nice. All right. Took the time to call me, which I was like, okay. He watches it on, re um, he doesn't watch it on YouTube or anything. He watches it on Manchester P Public Television, uh, uh, reruns on su Saturdays. I didn't catch his name. He lives on the east side. But he was very interested in what was going on with this community center. And he said, something just, this seems odd. It seems off. And he said, 
he was very curious if Manchester Public Television had taped this community meeting. And I said, I don't believe they had. I said, I did tape it, um, but I don't believe they had. And I had the same wonder, if you're having a community of meeting, why wouldn't you reach out? I'm not faulting Manchester Public Television in any way, shape or form. And they don't, they don't tape everything. But I don't even know if they were asked to tape it, but like, why wouldn't you want, oh, we were not invited. So nobody from this group that's supposedly trying to, you know, embrace the neighborhood and work with the community bothered to have it publicized on Manchester Community Television so that more of the community and more of the neighborhood could find out what's going on. Um, so this morning, I had it on my phone. That's always a challenge. Like, how do you get it to the phone? The phone's got to go to the Google, Google Photos, the Google Photos to the YouTube. I'm like, whatever. Um, so it's up on YouTube, and I did share it on my Facebook page in a public post. So yep. anybody and, and it's also can on, see it. on my wall. And I, I tagged you, mm -hmm. so that, and I tagged Manch Talk so that enough people... Um, so it's an awful video. The video is awful. The yeah, audio the is, is mediocre because we're in the back of the room. Right. But I did re-listen to what I re thought I remembered from the meeting. Um, whenever anybody spoke about really not wanting in the community, there was a lot of applause. The majority of the people who weren't already involved with this project, meaning other Democrat aldermen, the mayor of Manchester, city employees, et cetera. Parks and Rec, right. the architect, right. the Those people, other than them, everybody seemed to be clapping when any, for anybody. I mean, I would say if questions. I had to like summarize it, I'd say there were 100 people of which 20 were city officials and yeah. the other 80 were, were abutters were... or people in the neighborhood and everyone was against right. it. Right, or would at be least my everybody breakdown. had concerns. And the, a very valid point that you brought up is why, why the urgency? Because it was. It seemed like there was like, oh, my God, we have to do this so fast. It is because I will tell you the, the so several people express that uh, a gentleman called Bob who actually works in the community garden. I've been tangentially mm. involved trying to get people to rent the spaces, mm. donating plants, that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't actually garden there, although I should because I went to look at my vegetable garden and that weekend. uh Right. And uh, <laughs> Vegas didn't was was not a friend to it, um, but you know uh, uh, people are saying you know so so there is a sense of railroading and something I would like to say as well you know I have a lot of experience both as an attorney and as someone who's trained in mediation I understand how these things right. work and I will tell you it's a dirty trick that anyone who has half a brain knows and understands. If you have a meeting and you start with the premise that we are doing this and then literally decide to disregard the people who are saying, hold on, hold on, are we doing this? Let's talk about whether this is what we should do. Is this where we should do it? Uh, why here? What are the other properties we looked at? Have you considered X, Y, and Z, right? So the fact that three people got up and said, we think uh, the, the issue should be, let's discuss if, not right. when. Exactly. And the person who was taking the notes very politely ignored that yeah every single time and then wrote down little other questions. Yep. So basically within a definitional situation of railroading, if you say to me, the community center group vows to work with the neighbors when you one, did not inform the abutters, two, are railroading the, the thing through, I mean this, pile of paper. I know, I have so much paper. Is, is the purchase agreement that they're going to do tonight, okay? If you're unwilling to have the conversation about whether this is the right spot and you're ripping out our community yeah. garden in order to build a community center that the community is literally telling you so, we don't want or need. So something is fishy. Been, been doing way too much reading, you know me. I, I, I'm trying to find stuff. So I, I read most or I perused the minutes from the June 21st Committee on Lands and Buildings. Um, and a variety of people said a variety of things. Um, interesting couple things. Uh, Sally Stebbins, who was Mark Stebbins' um, wife. So I'm going to stop for a second. 
Mark Stebbins was a very, very generous man. Nobody is down. Nobody is attacking Mark Stebbins, Mark Stebbins family, any of it. They, they, this all just has gotten way out of control, in my opinion. It's um, just not in the right it, spot. It, I mean, it's some, literally on a dead end. Well, street. and there's something not. It's something's just the timeline's just not adding up to me. So, anyways, Sally Stebbins said at one point. Um, the whole idea got started of a community center bringing together nonprofits under one roof. Just remember that. Uh, we've done a lot of research with, and work talking to people and doing surveys, which they may believe none of the that abutters. they did, but none of the abutters were actually notified. Um, at Alder, Alderman Lavasser had concerns that if they approve this, it would be going without notice to the abutters, so he does recognize that. And then I see that Mayor Craig spoke at this thing, and I thought, well, that's interesting, because Mayor Craig doesn't usually go to lands and buildings meetings, but okay, fine. Um, you know, she talked about, oh, thank everybody, all this stuff. Um, I feel, okay, so Alderman sat... Alderman Tony Sapienza, because now we have two Alderman Sapienzas, um, had concerns about selling the park land and losing the land. So she says, Alderman Craig, or Mayor Craig says, in the past when corporations have asked the city to purchase park lands, I have always said absolutely not because we will never get that land back. I feel very differently about this opportunity in front of us today. Because that's though, not in her backyard. Because to me, this is an extension of parks and recreation. So just remember that. She also goes on to say the property is completely underutilized right now. I'm going to put a lot of things out there. Then um, Alderman Barry did have concern that... Um, it was supposed to be the Boys and Girls Club, and that's how it was pitched. And then now 50% of it is going to be used for Boys and Girls Club, which was confirmed, I believe. Um, whoever Ms. McCracken is, and I'm not going to try. Chris McCracken, CEO of Amoskeg Health, said um, they were asking about, are there going to be other nonprofits? And Mrs. Stebbins said, yes, nonprofits and service providers. And Ms. Kraken from Amoskeg Health says, we have had conversations, for example, with employment security for signing up for TANF and other benefits. Um, so this is starting to sound more and more less like a community center in the sense of what most people think of the community center as space that's available to be used by the community and more of what um, I'm my gut tells me and that this is an extension of the city because it is said on there on mark stebbins community center's website there's a q a um which was put up i believe yesterday right which put up yesterday because the me meetings tonight and they know that a bunch of people are going to the meeting to complain that they don't want this to be passed tonight. and that w it wasn't clearly communicated and whatever um, and one of the other tricks they're doing so you know is that it, they're saying it's since november last year but again the abutters were informed Eight days so ago. So somebody asked, neighbors are concerned about the, this is the things, neighbor, these are the things they did write down. Neighbors are concerned about the loss of green space. So it says, we are committed to having green space, outdoor activity space, and the garden. Green space is really important since the building will be part of the school campus in the neighborhood. So now, all these little tidbits that are all the things that make my little spidey sense go off, and I went back to the the video and I rewound and I rewound and I hate rewinding and I rewind and I back and forth. So when asked about the process, because people were like, I don't understand why, you know, what, why, why weren't people notified? Um, I'm not sure who the woman was. Very nice woman. I think she might have been from the Stebbins family. The blondish. No, not the no. woman with the microphone. The woman who was over to the left. Diane from Boys and Girls Club? Might have been Diane from Boys and Girls Club, now you said she, she was answering my okay. question, so yes. it was and part this of is, that. Yes. Yes. So she says, your voice matters and time is essence, right? Fair. And then you asked, followed up with, but what is the sense of urgency? And she said, the urgency is because it is a great need. We want to find the most appropriate property that's going to meet those needs. And funding that is happening out there in our community, even statewide, is established now, and we want to secure some of that funding as well. And then she was pushed for what is the funding. This was the answer the night of the meeting. Federal funding that is coming in, grant opportunities, all of that. 
at what point the the executive director jumped in interrupted and said because they were like oh we don't private, actually want to be wait, on record about private that. funding as well mostly from individuals in the community and other people across the country as well as foundations so now back at the beginning of this in the union leader article when we first found out about it we were told that this 17 million dollars were going was going to be privately raised to fund this project and that six hundred thousand is being donated by one donor for the property so originally all private privately raised money then at the meeting we're told first the first words out because i wanted to make sure i just wasn't you know sometimes you remember things differently federal funding that is coming in grant opportunities all of that then if you look at the on their q a which is there right now um how will you raise the 17 million we will be raising funds from individual donors local and national foundations companies and pursuing federal funding I'm gonna say this, I call malarkey. Yep. I would call it with something else, but I shouldn't say it on TV. So I call <laughs> malarkey. Something doesn't add up. There is this sense of urgency. Now, so, so she actually did say, I think somewhere along with that, that there are deadlines, right? So we well, know that AR- The ARPA money, there's there's federal PA. funds having to do with COVID. I, I looked at some budgets this morning, and I think it was on lands and buildings, although it might have been a different one. Yep. But I'm pretty sure it was lands and buildings budgets. The very itemized, they're four or five pages. Yep. And then the last item is ARPA funds twenty six million. Right. Everything else is like two thousand so, here, seven thousand there, and then suddenly just this. You know, right. so so is there a great need or is there well, a great and, need to spend funding well, to pay someone to, right. to so launder money? When they frankly. say there's a need, I'm not against Boys and Girls Club being on the West Side. I'm just not. No, and Second Street would be a great there, place. Well, for I mean, there, some place would be a great place. I don't think disrupting this neighborhood further to build a building that, I'm sorry, Mayor Craig, you're completely wrong. That land is not completely underutilized. Perhaps you should step over to the west side more often. There is an entire community garden existing there that would have to be removed and rebuilt, obviously in a smaller scale because that, that law is simply not built big enough. But the, also who takes away green space to quote right. the mayor herself, oh, we always say no, but suddenly now we're right. gonna put a football so, field building. But if there's a um, up. if there's a need, it did that need arise from concerns from people in the community or did that need arise because there was an opportunity Trinity. to to re work with the city and get this land and build this entity. I have significant concerns. We know that it is Boys and Girls Club and Amoskeg Health. Amoskeg Health rebranded themselves in the last few years. They used to be Manchester Community, Community Health. Health. So fine, they, uh, you know, it's got a prettier name now. So they, we know they will be in the building. There is no, everywhere you read, no one can tell you which other nonprofits will be in that building? Also, no one. They, they, they all say none of this is decided. How big would the building be? Well, we're not really sure. How much trees will be taken down? Well, we're not really sure. Is there a rendering of what the building might possibly? No, nope, we don't have that. There is. There are zero details being brought forth. Maybe there are details behind the scenes that we don't know about, but there are zero details being shared with the actual community. I know um, I question i brought up um how much is it taxable i never did get an answer about that would well, it be so taxable what they said is oh because they're transferring the property to a 501c3 is my understanding right yep. so they're selling it although we should look at who the parties are on the sales agreements so uh they said oh well that transfers so this property is going to be held by a non-tax Right. So uh, no not, taxes. So, are, so no property taxes right. are going to be paid by right. this organization. And they but services are going to be provided. Right. They were talking about parking well, I mean, and uh, bus service and people right. that they were going to bring in, etc. So that will influence well, our tax rates. Exactly. So I know another person followed up and said, "But wait, I want to know more about the services because." They did say they have they have a budget for operational expenses. So I'm I'm going to interpret that to mean they will take care of their own landscaping. They because it'll be private property at that point. They would take care of plowing their parking lot. But 
That doesn't mean there is no impact to the rest of the city and the services provided. The city still picks up trash. The city still has to plow the streets. They're going to have to extend the street at some point. I can't imagine that that area is not going to get more attention than other residential neighborhoods because it impacts the schools and everything. Well, the city's um, going to have to come deal with the homeless people exactly. who are going to camp behind my right. property because they were already doing that two years ago. Right. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, when there's incidences at this community center that is housing all sorts of nonprofits with all sorts of um, goals and attracting different elements of the community of the uh, of people, there will be more calls to fire for re fire and ambulance and police, and that does impact everyone in the city of Manchester who pays taxes. But also, just you know, I I, I know this is like flogging a dead horse, but honestly, to, to, to say that you're going to build something for the community Without and talking not to the community. talking to the community yeah. who literally lives there, it was all property owners, we are all owners in that neighborhood, we are the people, we heart west, you know, I, we pick well, up the trash. We heart we, west from what I understand because I was doing a cleanup on, um, Saturday morning with them, um, there were t at least two members of We Heart West who were m very much involved in the community aspect of it back when they hel held those meetings in April and May. They had no, no notice that this property had been selected and that they were approaching the city see, about it. So even people working within the Mark Stebbins Community Center project were not made aware of this, which and, is And concerning. that is because they are trying to railroad it through. Yeah, and that is not, not right. how you deal. How, how do you build a community center you build where you piss off the entire community before you even start it? That is that is backwards like if you want to build a community center you involve the community by involving the abutter well, and what's very frustrating so at one point mark mike stebbins who i assume is mark stebbins brother um when he was asked about the process he says typically the city and i did paraphrase a little here because i wasn't going to rewind three thousand times typically the city of manchester that you are interested in you make an overture to the city they send that to lands and building and he said that protocol was fo followed. And he said, and let me make clear, he emphasizes, let me make perfectly clear, no requirement to notify a butters or anyone in the area was required. So he, he, the attitude seemed to be, we are not required to tell you what it is we're doing. And then they go on to say, and trust us, well, and we're here to build it. We're gonna vow to work with the neighbor. Pat Longword said to me, well, we did do our due diligence, and now's the chance when people could um, voice their concerns and, and work out the kinks. But I'm like, no, because you're saying, okay, they can come to the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting tonight and speak their three, three minutes. But that's not a conversation. Then they can go to zoning or planning when those meetings come up, and they can voice their concerns. But again, that is not a conversation. A conversation requires a back and forth between parties. All all the community or the neighbors or the residents or the taxpayers or anybody will be able to do is say their words and that's it there'll be no there is no i believe the way it was presented to me was it's a done deal tough so it's so kinda, yeah that's so, kind of so, what it so, sounded like so again that is not how you build community you don't railroad the community in their own backyards because that's probably going to turn out to be a bad decision all round. So I want to make sure that people watching this on Facebook, because this won't play until Thursday, obviously, and by then the meeting will be over. Tonight, July 19th at 7 p.m. is the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting where this is on the agenda. Any resident of Manchester gets three minutes to speak their mind. If you have concerns about this process, if you think perhaps we should slow this down a whole lot, if you have suggestions for other locations, anything, I encourage all of you to come to the Aldermanic meeting at City Hall on the third floor tonight at 7 p.m. You got three minutes. Speak your mind. Don't be afraid of the camera. Don't be afraid of stepping on anybody's toes. If people don't speak up, this is how government over overrides whatever it is that we want in our own city. They're not, they're there to serve us. We're not there at their bequest. We are the ones who should be in charge. The people are the ones who should be in I charge. Mean, That's why they're be. called 
public servants. Yeah. They're not dictators. So come on out tonight, City Hall, 7 p.m. Uh, I know I'll be there. I know Carl will be there. A whole bunch of people will hopefully be there. Um, if you have any suggestions, questions, um, need links to any of this information um, that we've been talking about, by all means, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, I'll gladly send you whatever information you, I have. Um, I also filed a right to know request this morning with the mayor's office, both via email and on their online form. That means they have five days that they have to respond and give us the information. The information I'm most interested in is to know what other parcels of land mm. were considered for this and what criteria and why they were declined so that we can fully oh. understand the landscape of the yep. situation. I am a West Side resident. I've been there for a, a, a fair amount of time by now. I could think off the top of my head of at least four other places that I think would work as well um, that don't, you know, that aren't on a dead end street and in a residential neighborhood. Interesting little tidbit. The original plan was to use part of West High School. So my yes. the spidey sense in me says this is not an independent entity. This is part of the school system. That's and, the school and the system that can't teach your kids to read and write and they would like to now offer, you know, services. And so the question someone said, and, you know, legitimately we do see the kids around the neighborhood, um, you know, maybe there is a need, again, then put the need where the people are, or just use the schools for afternoon programs. They're just standing empty anyway. So, you know, leave our garden alone. That's what the community wanted. That's what the community put in. That is what the community needs. We don't need this there. And that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> I knew that would, to the gentleman who called, thank you so much. It was a wonderful conversation. I'm, I apologize, I did not catch your name. Uh, feel free to call me anytime you want. Um, enjoy this wonderful weather. It is hot and rainy and sticky, but um, public, the city pools and splash pads are open. So get on out there and enjoy this. Uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.